Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, under the title Roaming Transcities and Airborne Fiction, we'll um, present a collaboration project that myself and Charlene did. Uh, uh, we're based in the United Arab Emirates. Um, um, our apologies are, are, it's very hot here, but our images will, um, will include um, uh, climates of over 50 degrees centigrade and so on. So I apologize if. Uh, some of you feel a little bit warmer after this. Um, um, the, um, so we have a series of, of, of images um, and we go through a process of thinking how we develop uh, some of the photographs that we're exhibiting um, downstairs. Um, and we're quite interested about the, the current condition in the Arabian Peninsula and the Gulf. There's a lot of um, euphoria and confidence within, a lot of criticism, if you like, from the rest of the world. And we've been working, developing a series of proposals, maybe a series of photographic uh, imagery uh, that begin to tackle, kind of both celebrate, but also criticize some of the conditions uh, there. And we want to start with um, uh, a series of images. So we, the interest is um, what we call um, aerial or reconnaissance one might call it also telegenic urbanism, um, the, the pleasure, uh, it's almost like a, a military, if you like, way of looking at the earth fr from above and through the development of Google Earth and so on. The fascination of looking at cities as little models or little toys become quite uh, fascinating. Um, this is an interesting image um, of the night view uh, of, of the Gulf and we're not quite interested really in, in the boundaries of cities, but rather the, the density of lights and settlement around the, um, the, the water, this, what we call the necklace um, um, establishments and colonies are around, around the Gulf. And uh, there's, a, there's a reason for this, um, exactly the same uh, scale image. This is not so much looking from above, but looking from underneath. This is the geological condition of the Gulf. Um, the white dots now represent uh, reservoirs of, of oil and, and natural gas. So there is um, an incredible, um, invisible, if you like, dynamics why the, the previous image, maybe we can go back now, yeah. this exists um, in such a, a kind of pattern because underneath that there's this incredible uh, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure, if you like, of of, of wealth. So north, south and east west, uh, east, west axis inevitably meet in this, in this part of the world because of the water and because of the, of the discovery of oil. And it kind of represents, with all the criticism, a, a new future of a nomadic uh, condition. Um, so the tabula rasa with a, a series of complex uh, developments and, and this is the outcome of, of a, a fast-forward city which has been developed in the last uh, uh, maybe 10 or 15 years. Um, incredibly um, vibrant, uh, very much in, this, in the middle of, 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 uh, of nowhere. And, and it does produce this new condition, this interconnectivity, uh, hybridization and, and so on. Um, yet the, the reality on the ground is, um, it's, um, or the, the reality rather, from a different point of view, it's quite uh, uh, banal, maybe um, ugly in a way. This image is it, it, it's so ugly that it becomes uh, beautiful in its own way. This is the, the random and sporadic, sporadic uh, development of, of houses in, in this um, uh, inhospitable um, uh, landscape. Yet one can go back to the uh, historic uh, Islamic city, which was the center of a generation of, of art, um, uh, collection and gathering in high densities of informal, um, private um, spaces, um, interactive, universal, modest, and, and so on. So this, this condition, which is already, of course, uh, historic, becomes an interesting model how one can uh, create a series of interconnectivities um, in this uh, part of, of the world. So we have been doing this one of our three-dimensional renderings, um, taking on the um, um, uh, kind of traditional abstract uh, Islamic uh, calligraphy and geometry and generating 
Um, I know this word hybridization has been used before, but this is the word that uh, we're using as well, um, of, of a kind of blind form and, and, and building and a landscape at the same time, um, celebrating the aerial spectacular condition of a, of a possible uh, future state of, 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 the, of the city. At the same time, uh, the notion of the, of the master plan um, the oriental carpet, if you like, very much decorative, at the same time inspired by the axial um, 19th century French uh, garden, if you like, design, very much uh, decorative, very much uh, uh, pixelated and, uh, and repeated. Um, and this is the, if you like, the, the condition of the new, the new urban condition, one, one begins to inhabit um, a, an image. So some of our work, um, uh, like this one, for example, is the is the outcome, the outcome, the um, like an amalgam of uh, uh, um, uh, repetitive patterns, uh, ambiguous sites. One is not sure. One is not sure whether this is uh, a project under construction, whether it's a project which is uh, left uh, to ruin. Uh, whether this is um, solid, whether it's water, and, and, and so on. Um, going back a little bit to this notion of, which is very much part of the way I think future, um, a future way of looking at urban is, is this obsession with the technology of, of communication, um, the spectacle, the air, a spectacle of looking down at the earth, as though the earth is a, it's a little, uh, the city is like a, li a little Lego town, um, as a kind of a toy and playful, and the, if you like, the, the pleasure and the fasc fascination um, of looking at the city as a kind of reconnaissance uh, technology. This is from the um, early, mid-20th century New York uh, uh, World Expo. So, so the city we have been uh, living and, and describing and working um, has kind of multiple lives. It, it lives in the present. The present is very ugly and it's full of scaffolding and usually exposed to uh, sandstorms and, and extreme weather, but also a kind of lives in the promise of the future. So the notion of, of virtuality um, or the representation, this is a billboard of a future development which looks fascinating. The, the, the kind of, it's even more fascinating because um, this condition uh, would have been built over the next few years, which actually it did happen. And this is it. Um, under construction. Again, there's a kind of um, uh, in, intense and maybe banal architecture. It's almost like a, a paper architecture, cardboard architecture of um, Western models. So this is Western models of urbanism and architecture, you can say. So this is the outcome of, of the magnificent, spectacular um, master plan uh, becoming um, a, a reality. I'll be doing this time here. I promise you, I'm going to give you ten minutes to. <laughs> um, so, so the uh, the idea of uh, um, enjoying the making and displacing and interacting uh, and almost become like little children in future cities. Um, uh, it's it's a way of looking um, at this global nomadic condition of, of the city where everything can be interchanged or over uh, almost uh, overnight. And the cinem cinematic, uh, this is a shot from the uh, uh, Planet of the Apes, very much the, the building. One is not, again, sure whether the, this kind of urbanism is emerging or, or really absorbed by the landscape, whether it's a, it's a new condition or a ruin. And, and this in between ambiguity, um, I think, becomes interesting. Um, before the building becomes glossy, um, uh, uh, this becomes a really interesting uh, density of, of uh, possibilities. Some of the tricks we did in, in the desert um, um, were quite uh, um, revealing. Um, so this idea of the, of the fake representation of, of the city, this is a, a huge billboard, actually it's almost the back of a billboard. Um, of a future hotel, which is meant to be the largest hotel in the world, um, in the middle of nowhere, this bizarre 
almost uh, 200 uh, meters long kind of scale model, it becomes so interesting that one doesn't need to, to have the building yet because the virtual and the fake already is, is becoming the spectacle uh, and the big panoramic, if you like, uh, experience. Very much the same as um, visitors in the, um, in the New York Export um, 70 years ago in enjoy in a way the, if you like, the fakeness of the futuristic uh, uh, city uh, to come, who probably never came uh, exactly like that. And a lot of other examples that we've been looking how one can uh, kind of simulate the everyday, if you like, but also exaggerate and augment um, the notion of uh, representation, um, possible future science fiction, um, um, absolute simulation, and, and so on. This is uh, from uh, SimCity's um, uh, game. So, so the SimCity's game with a two-dimensional uh, oriental, if you like, carpet um, composition versus the vertical westernized uh, tower blocks which are there, not so much about the inhabitants but about the, the kind of the observer of the image which one can see the future um, clients or the future owners of, of, this, of this city has become so intense and like the previous image I mentioned, it also becomes um, incredibly um, uh, intense moment because exactly this image was built um, even more, I would say, uh, a few years later. This form of urbanism cannot compromise. Um, what you see is what you get, and sometimes you get a little bit uh, more. Um, and once it's been built, um, again, um, the reconnaissance um, technology of, if you like, uh, strategic military uh, ways of looking at landscapes for the intention to attack, if you like, um, uh, the enemy, becomes a form of uh, public relations um, uh, selling point, but also the actual artificial landscape that, that has been created can then be, begin to become deformed, uh, uh, to become another second wave, if you like, of interpretation. This is, of course, a photograph of one of the existing uh, uh, pro projects. Um, so uh, the um, um, uh, um, fractal landscape of uh, the bits and pieces that are there only to be seen from above, not so much from underneath. Um, the artificial islands, uh, waterways, canals, uh, shore fronts, um, and so on, becomes the new typology uh, of this synthetic hybrid landscape that we've been extracting components to create our own, if you like, conditions. And this is one of the uh, images or proposals that have, we have been working with, um, where intentionally um, the image is, is almost placed exactly in the middle between um, a reality or a memory of what we think it is and a possible future of what can be. As I said, it might be in the process of being made as a series of landform and, and islands um, and kind of real estate, waterfront uh, developments uh, without any buildings, um, or it can be almost at the moment of, 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 of a kind of collapse, ecological uh, collapse. So this, this very fine position is, is as a kind of um, way of interconnecting perceptions and, and bringing this kind of global um, uh, condition, whether it's a form of uh, nomadic, whether it's a form of multi cultural and so on, it's something that we're quite interested in generating these, these images. I'm going to just run quickly through the images and um, you're going to see some of the ones that we are exhibiting downstairs and then some components of it. But as George was saying, uh, a lot of the times we looked at aerial photos, especially ones that were manifesting that moment of transience and we're looking specifically for this, um, between the static and the charged and the carved and the organic and most often we ourselves couldn't tell how much of it was a natural existing uh, 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 island and, and how much of it was intentionally carved out. 
Um, and most often you can see some of them are, are added on, but in, in essentially they're conglomerates of lakes, deserts, islands, and, and coastlines that are either stretched out um, in terms of land reclamation or the inverse of it. Um, so some of the images that we generated ourselves were looking into how we could explore artificial landscapes for living, work, and leisure by looking at it from a, from a machinic, urban, and, and uh, auto-generated emergent patterns, basically. Which we didn't find was much different from the reality of the, of the 21st century uh, Gulf City. Um, but also, there's a, there's a so sort of filmic uh, montage as, as, a, as an experiential component as you move across the city. And, but when we went back to the area, we thought, we thought that there is a very prominent uh, uh, a sense of literal urban collaging that's also happening. Uh, this is also one of the images that uh, from, from um, this is an actual culture of photography, but it looks sort of outside of the city. But again, this is the industrial area under construction. But again, the, the, the whole aspect of the toy city, the micro mega, um, and then moving back in towards the city are these uh, almost like these uh, dreamscapes that are entertaining the idea of the, the existing no nostalgic uh, 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 references to uh, utopia. Um, and, and what's so interesting about this, um, one is not Quite, into, in, uh, quite sure if this is a photograph or an amazing rendering or a collage. And the same with the previous one. Um, it is a photograph, actually. Yes. Um, and, and again, it, it has this kind of banal condition, as I call it, it's ugly, it's so ugly, it becomes really interesting to some extent. Yeah, sure. yeah but there's also, I mean, there's that component of the, the utopic vision in, in the aerial, but actually when you're experiencing it, it's, it's, uh, it's very much conventional suburban housing uh, on that level. Uh, we also looked at uh, parametric algorithms, uh, again, to, to apply potential, which we didn't know what was more bizarre, actually, whether it was uh, the, the existing or the generated. Um, but what we did notice that as, as the cities are, are recovering, again, this is, a, this is a, most of what you see is a, a, a satellite image, and then we, we ourselves at one point stopped distinguishing between what was, uh, what was applied. And maybe it, it didn't even matter after a while. Um, the, the aerial view for us also, I mean, it seems to provide this encapsulation of everything that seemed to be important to promote the place and, and, and the city but simultaneously also empowering the spectator. And if we go back to um, the, the, the history of, of this kind of aerial view, whether it's in, in news reporting, or uh, whether it's the, the, the Google Earth, or whether it's SimCities or, or uh, design programs, it essentially empowers you to be in either virtual control or at least in a, in a perceived um, uh, 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 control by, by a knowledge of what's actually uh, there. Um, but basically, the, the spatial and urban approach definitely, in, 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 in this aspect, emphasizes on both enclaves and, and exclusiveness. And it's through, as George mentioned earlier, the, the coastal uh, necklace settlements, uh, but also this sand and silicon pixelated patterns. Um, they're developing more uh, these new satellite urbanisms. And we found also we found references um, to the visions of, of utopia also as an aerial panoramic uh, uh, view. This is actually an image of uh, Disneyland under construction, um, and around the same time, Disney Studios was involved in, in film sets, um, but also uh, urban sets for uh, for military bases and and when they wanted to have a, a camouflage certain certain areas into suburban settlements. Um, so we were also investigating uh, military uh, military urbanisms, which are sort of have this Hollywood-esque appeal and uh, have that aspect of the hyper-planned future fictitious city. Um, 
And when it, when it starts appearing, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's the placelessness or, or the displacement or the mental design of it is almost intentional. And uh, you have something to say if you really like this. And, and also it shows the, the, the fragility or the moment of uh, momentarily er erasing the city. Uh, and there's a constant reminder of nature in a gentle and a much more violent, violent way that wants to come in and wipe off really like the, any, any development that goes around that. So this kind of survival conflict that goes over centuries through this nomadic persistence to go back and live there and so on, I think this image becomes quite, quite uh, obvious. Um, this is another image of ours, but it's it's um, it's actually a site, a construction site with the with the hoarding panels from the from the developing the construction company actually, and then within it, it's it's, a, it's again applied the same um, design. But in effect, the digital imagery is shaping sort of the future. Like this is actually the use of exponential algorithms to expand into coastal areas and, and uh, see how much or in, in what pattern to occupy uh, land within the within the water. And in in reality, basically, this is again the the real estate subdivision or plots that are going to be sold, and they're basically sold on paper with. Um, with and, and this is that the kind of interesting moment where the the edge to inhabit a satellite image uh, becomes a real estate map of precise land ownership and in buildings. It's almost like one is forcing this suburbia lifestyle, you have water in the front of your apartment, you have a swimming pool, you also have water now in the back of your apartment as well. And it's this kind of uh, secluded and exclusive uh, lifestyle, yeah. um, which becomes also bizarre in, 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 certain, in certain ways. But also it's the, it's, yeah, this is the last couple of slides we'll wrap up. Um, the, the real estate sort of vision is viciousness is also coupled with this uh, with a very particular will and intent and then we also start realizing that the, the image is actually subservient to to other uh, this thing. But the, the the this is our last uh, image. Um, but I mean all we can say is like the past decade has, has uh, witnessed this climactic boom of, of, of the place and then ended up in a lot of uh, moments of these uh, Disinterested uh, residential communities, and and of course these are photographic images, but they're not the real photographic images. In some of them, we um, embed it like some virtual uh, representation. In others, we subtract it. In others, we intentionally deform. So what you see here is almost like this moment of disbelief that um, if this is the ideal suburbia of the 21st century, you can see that it's almost real, or can this be real? And, and this moment of, of question in your presence, I guess we're more interested in the future in this presentation, um, for us becomes quite interesting because it's, it's always a, a project in, in, in the making, um, almost at the, at the moment where it, it's never complete, it's always a promise of something else to happen. And, so we want to retain this temporality of the nomadic um, condition of, um, of this part of the, of the world. Thank you. Questions? With the real estate, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. artworks that yeah, I think that in Peru where you can only see them from above. It might be very much of the uh, jet the, the jetty palm tree and so on that you can only understand if you are somewhere above them so you cannot see them basically, yes? Well, that's it, nice. it, is it not a subversion of the visual of the domination of the eye of how you look see and it's more like a, do you think that this is more like a how you feel within spaces as opposed to seeing the spaces? 
Uh, I think there's a preoccupation uh, of, uh, of, of, uh, of the image more than the moment of spatial or social inhabitation. Some of these houses are really ugly and, and so on. I mean, they're huge and extremely expensive, but architecturally, there's no sense of space or there's no sense of community whatsoever. But you can see your house or your villa from, from satellite. You don't do that in your normal house and so on. So this urge to sell a, a, a property um, uh, as an image, uh, it becomes, uh, I, mean, I mean, that's the reality. So in a way, we're, we're criticizing that. Also, uh, it's not as, uh, for most of us, maybe yourselves as well, it's not as naive and, and simplistic as one thinks. The reason that these exposed short lines and um, canals and jetties uh, is done is not just to create a pile, that's, that's the easy part. It, it really is an amazing geometric and infrastructural project, what I call a very vicious urbanism. It basically, it uh, multiplies, the, it extends the length, if you like, of the coastline. So, uh, in fact, uh, we intentionally did not mention the word Dubai, because it's not only about that, but most of it is about that. Um, the coastline of Dubai between Sharjah and Abu Dhabi, just to be more specific, is 45 kilometers. There's so many hotels and so many expensive um, uh, villas you can build there. By introducing this new hybrid landscape or urban landscape condition, they have extended 45 kilometers to, if I'm not mistaken, over 2,000 kilometers of coastline uh, because they made islands and they made them around like that. So it, it's an incredible and intelligent system which has been sold as, a, as an image, if you like. But behind that, there's a whole notion of, of geometry and inf what we call infrastructure and, and, and so on. Uh, and who, who would be buying these villas, for example? I mean, obviously multi-millionaires, but all, all from uh, Dubai or from uh, in, in fact, 70% uh, uh, of, the, of the investment in the UAE comes from outside the UAE. It comes from, from all of us, shall we say. It's, 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 um, and most of these uh, buyers will, will not be uh, locals. Locals will go somewhere else. So it's, it's, it's geared to a specific uh, market uh, as well, which is another, I think, intelligent marketing. Uh, I wish um, other countries, maybe I don't, I'm not wishing, but uh, other countries can have this um, intense, um, or other vision and, and, and to take a risk, if you like, and go to that thing, despite all the negative and all the criticism that we can all engage of ecology and uh, mm. uh, tradition and, and landscape, the destruction of that, uh, that's one part of it. But um, uh, we're quite interested in, in this uh, fabrication of a landscape as an image, um, which has become so incredibly uh, successful for what it was intended to be. I mean, what is all, uh, I was just thinking that, of course, the whole architecture is also really bound to the fact of labor. And as we know, you can only live there if you have labor. And if you think sort of back into the past of sort of labor houses or sort of developments, you know, which were sort of around the turn of the century, you know, that I think is also interesting, like sort of how then architecture was designed, you know, for labels, let's say, for people who just came to a specific place to work there. And then, I mean, that is sort of, there so interesting that it's a loop, you know, because the image is designed for people who are part of the image. You know, there is sort of not that much this kind of, as we are looking or searching for this moment of individual notion which you cannot find, you know, you are sort of trapped in the repetition, like in the loop in a certain sense. That I find if you look at it as architect, as labor architecture, that um, <coughs> then also I think from the nomadic point of view, a very interesting moment. And I was thinking in comparison to, you know, we have this radical 
degrees like in here, you know, 50 degrees, something <laughs> like that, over there. It's like this, we're simulating, we have, the, we have a little sandstorm coming in. <laughs> in comparison to minus 50 degrees, you know, which is the other oil land, if you think of the north of Canada, in comparison to the Gulf, one has plus, the other one has minus, and also there, like, the labor architecture has extremely high value for other people who work in the oil sand business, you know. That's nothing, sort of, it's more like a thought that it's basically in a certain sense labor architecture. No, I mean, and, and that's especially true because it's, uh, I mean, particularly here, it's, it's a distributive economy, but all of the land that is given, that is given away by the government is all inland. It's in the desert. So mm -hmm. really, maybe the first few images, that's the kind of plots that are given for people to build their houses on. So everyone else is, is part of the image, is moving into the verticals, whether they're coming temporarily or for however long they end up staying and building over, over there, building the image and, and physically, but it's, it's, it's definitely everything, everything that is, uh, that is the permanent is, is in the desert, is much further. And in a, in a very paradoxical way, and I mean that really seriously, this city has um, a race of boundaries. It's one of the most multicultural places I ever lived. Um, there are segregations and, and, and divisions uh, but there's no discrimination in a way um, in the sense that everybody in the sense that everybody can go and live there. I know I'm putting myself into into trouble. Um, uh, uh, but, um, but in, I mean what I want to say at the end of the day the, the banality of the image and this urge to inhabit this constructed artificial virtual almost landscape has um, a flip side which is also very interesting, that it, it allows um, a certain level of integration, interconnectivity, more than a, a, what Ram Kuhlhaus calls the saturated West cannot do. The saturated West uh, has inherited its, its social problems. We have inherited problems here in the Middle East, in the Gulf, but there's a certain freshness to, re, to correct problems, and there are a lot of ways of doing that, but somehow it has achieved paradoxically a most amazing integration of, 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 of nomads. Yeah, okay. I think we do that later in the discussion about the race. Just a, just a quick question. Uh, there, is, there, is, there is some value. No, I, well, I'm not hiding from that. Is that I'm aware of the conditions in which the laborers who build these buildings live. And there's been a lot of work done to expose it, and it's, it's quite extensive. So, where do you see some of the construction? I mean, it's true. Also, it's exploring that aspect. There's a certain ugliness um, in behind the, the construction, but there's a, there's that, that if we get into that discussion, we can talk about a lot of uh, places. There's, lo there's a lot that comes to mind, actually, that we can go beyond the region as well. Uh, but I think what you meant by it, there was a, there's a permeation. So there's no perceived, there's a, there's a, a very, very, um, uh, ugly side, and at the same time, there is no blo blocks, or, or there, there's a, there exists a permeation throughout the the city, whereas you you see it as a very uh, segregated or mismatched uh, mixed place, but but there is a lot of uh, porosity within it. I think that was a, that was that had no implication on social problems that exist. For sure. So it's 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 more about the porosity, uh, urban porosity rather than a social framework. Uh, yeah, questions. Yeah, I mean it's a question of how much of that is going to connect it to the game. I mean the social with the kind of urbanism you're discussing. But just a quick point, because you the word nomad and nomadic has an experience but thrown around quite a bit. I'm just wondering what you have in mind when you talk about these places 
especially in the Middle East, what kind of romance are we talking about? Or if you're talking about the experience, what kind of experience is that? I mean, traditionally, this place was occupied by Bedouins. These are tribes that came around different parts of uh, the Arabian Peninsula and so on. Yeah. And they established this level of permanence from the 50s onwards. Um, but even more than that, the current inhabitants of, of the cities, 90% uh, are non-citizens. So they are nomads in the sense that they, they never, they don't belong to that um, city itself. So they go in and out according to the duration of their visa and so on. So in that sense, um, the city is occupied, uh, it's like a huge airport, I was calling it. You just go in and out as, as you need to. And Dubai mainly, but other parts of, of the Gulf, such as Doha, Abu Dhabi, uh, Bahrain, and so on and so on. Okay, we'll just stop here. Uh, time for the next speakers. Thank you both very much.